What's up Rockstars? Sadly I can't be excited for this video. I've been banned from another board game group by developers and uh, people who create board games and run this industry. And uh, I've been cursed out. I've been uh, lied about. They've been manipulating and spreading lies and deleting comments that I say to try and spin a narrative. But luckily they want proof and names so I will give proof and names. So let's go over exactly what's been happening. Thank you to my channel sponsor Into the AM. As a company that believes hard work and a great product is a proper way to conduct business, I am delighted to have them as part of the channel. They have some of the coolest graphic t-shirts around and an absolute best fit and feel that has continually exceeded my expectations. With new shirts arriving all the time and other products like boxers, hats, and even a monthly shirt club, I wholeheartedly recommend them to you. Check out the link in my description of this video for an exclusive 10% off everything they sell. Now one thing I can be excited about is my patrons and YouTube members. It is truly through your financial support that this channel is possible so that I do not rely on a Facebook group for board games. I don't rely on free games. I don't rely on this industry at all to bring you the coverage that I do. And that allows me the freedom to speak as I wish. And it means that they cannot control anything that I say in any way, shape or form. If you appreciate that level of freedom in this industry, if you want to see change like that happening where more people can speak up when they see things that are wrong, there is a link down in the description below. Even a dollar a month would help greatly. I do truly appreciate each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for uh, putting me in this position. Now, sadly, this position gets me banned and, and uh, there's a lot of pushback from the industry when you critique the industry at this point. Um, we'll, we'll be talking about a variety of things. I thought about just um, going over all the comments, but uh, I, I, I think really we're gonna get down to what led to me being called a D-I-C-K and having that allowed and me banned. So how did somebody uh, be able to call me that under an admin where I've told an admin about it and that's allowed, but then I am banned. Let's go in and dive into why they would ban me and what I did to deserve it, perhaps. So first of all, they do want proof. Oh, so this is a janky system, by the way. I do apologize for that. It's not my normal setup. I typically do a little bit more information, but uh, I, I just got done with work, as you can see, and now I'm having to deal with this stuff because people want to fling mud and it's unfortunate, but it's important to highlight this and I won't stay silent about it. I'm. Uh, I, I do believe and I always have believed and standing up for what you believe in and being that one to actually take the hit publicly if needed to know that you put the truth, at least as you see it out there. Um, and then it can be discussed and dissected as it is, but at least it's out there. So um, I do apologize for any kind of jankiness with this. They want proof and names, so I will give proof and names. I typically try not to fling mud. It was my whole point of not doing that, just bringing in a solution. And if you don't know what happened, I posted a video uh, titled, They're Lying to You, and it talked about um, inflated shipping prices and how some companies, not all, but some companies are uh, charging double or even triple what other companies are doing and they're blaming little things like container prices and silly things like that and I was just trying to point out that like that's not the reason and so and we can we might dive into that a little bit here again completely unscripted I do have some bullet points just so I stay on focus but that's the kind of the the gist of it and then of course the industry did not react kindly to that and uh, definitely was a pushback on any criticism. And and I do want to make it a point to also not dehumanize anybody. So when I'm going through this, I, I'm going to try to kind of keep my cool and all that. I, I always try to do that. Uh, I am only human, so we'll see how that goes. But just know that these are real people, that as much as I might show a bad side of them, it's just one side. They are not defined by their actions in this Facebook group, okay? They are not defined by their actions and their careers making board games and board game content within this industry. That doesn't define them. These people are dads. These people are husbands. These people have aspirations and they like movies and I'm sure they have all sorts of fantastic qualities about them. So I don't want this to come across as dehumanizing this. I think that's what the root of the problem is, is people... They might even see me in the face that I am on this channel, but they just see King of Average. They don't see me. When they see my little Michael King, that's my name, on there, they just see a name and a little profile picture. They don't see me, the dad of four children. They don't see me, the husband of an amazing wife. They don't see me of my dreams and aspirations and my hope for the future of my kids or anything like that. We dehumanize people so much. And I don't want to do that, even with this video, even though I'm having to name names. And this is the first time I've done this because I don't name names. I don't like to. 
It's not fun. This video isn't fun. So that's a long disclaimer there. I just, I really want to drive that home. So we are talking about James Hudson. He is a board game developer, and it's uh, kind of ironic that he has this United Against Hate because I'm going to be showing a lot of hate and manipulation and lies specifically from James here. Uh, it's easy to get caught up in the drama. And it's easy to get conflated and um, too personal to an issue, and I mean, we all have bad days. I get that. I'm not trying to judge him as a person, but I am judging his actions today on what he did. So uh, we're talking about James here, and we're talking about Derek Funkhauser. These are the two admins running Board Game Spotlight, the Facebook board game group that uh, I was banned from. Okay, so let's do James Hudson first about shipping information. I'm going to break into shipping information, and then I'm going to be talking so that you can then see stuff like misinformation, outright lies. I'm going to be pointing out lies. I'm going to be pointing to where they're lying and specifically saying how they're lying and pro showing proof that they're lying and manipulating. And then I'll cover endorsement of hatred and cruelty and meanness. So starting things out, we have James Hudson at the very top level. Let's get away from that D-I-C-K comment that I was called, and and uh, that's still allowed. Apparently, that's that's fine to call people that on board game spotlights. Let's go to uh, this Brian Neff's comment here. It says, The argument I got back was burn cycle shit for che cheaper, which is a ridiculous argument. This box looks similar, so it should ship for the same price is an insane perspective, in which James Hudson responds with, It's an uneducated argument and one that sh should be tossed aside as nonsense. So a few things here. First of all, if it's an uneducated argument to talk about how the, the, the container size is not a valid argument, we can go to Stone Mayer himself because he actually already wrote an article like this. Now, I, I get he might say, hey, don't put me in this video or whatever. I'm not trying to put a bad light on him at all. I'm just pointing out that I am not the first person to say that and that there are people that do deal with this inherently that say the same kinds of thing as me. Now, they might come to different conclusions. They might speak it in a different voice, but it's not an inherently uneducated thing. They can't, they're trying to kind of do an appeal to authority here on like, oh, he just doesn't, he's not an expert. He doesn't know. His data is invalid because he's not an expert. So this is Stone Mayer right here saying, I've heard a few Kickstarter creators who are highlighting per container freight shipping costs and asking backers to pay more after the campaign as a result, which raises a red flag. If you see that happening, I think it appropriate for you to politely ask the creator to break down per unit costs as compared to the reward prices. Their per container cost is a flashy number to parade, or he put this in bold, to parade around, but it is a per unit cost that actually matters, which was 80% of my video focusing on exactly this. If they don't want to share, who here are a few price points of reference to calculate freight shipping costs, assuming the current per container rate of $15,000 for a 40-foot container and $11,000 for a 20-foot container. And then he gives those measurements and tells you how many units he can fit in that 40,000 unit. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because it's the exact thing I said. Now, I didn't see a whole lot of pushback from Stone Mayer saying it, but I certainly got a, you don't know what you're talking about, the moment I say the same exact thing thing. He's saying right here, if you just point to container prices, that's not a valid thing because the, the per unit cost isn't that actually that bad. It's not that much. And he again, he says that much here. So anyway, I'm, I'm not like saying anything inherently weird here, but they're very much acting like I am to kind of dismiss what I have to say, even though I'm not saying anything that other people are saying. And again, they didn't come out with, hey, could you show my numbers and like that? So let's do that right underneath that. An uneducated argument. Yes, that's me. I'm dismiss me because I just must not know what I'm talking about. Here is Frederick Henry. If you don't know who he is, he is in charge of Monolith. So he makes Conan and Batman, all this stuff. So in other words, he runs multi-million dollar Kickstarter campaigns. He ships tens of thousands of units and he has for years and years and years. And he actually piped in here, which I'm so thankful for because it's really nice to see he says, mine are $12,000 from China to the U.S. and to Europe. Uh, he speaks French mostly, so his English is a little broken. Please forgive him on that. This pr these prices are just two days old. So right now, he's paying $12,000 per crate. So it's not $10,000. I, By the way, I did round it down to ten because as I showed, it's a difference of like less than a dollar between those, something like that. And 10 is an easy number to do math on because then I was going to do 25 on 10 and stuff like that. So in, in the video format, it doesn't make a lot of difference when it comes to the whole message of it's being cheaper. And 
which is the whole point, and it's easier math to do. Um, but that's half of what I paid in 2021. So clearly, 40 foot container prices are strongly decreasing. We were at 16,000 two months ago for the exact same travel. So it went from, and you can see it right here, October 21, 21,000. It was high, 16,000, 12,000. Now that's again that flashy number. This is in bold. Stone Meyer put this flashy number you can throw around because it sounds real big, but the per unit cost obviously is much less, which is what I was saying. Now James responds to Frederick a lot nicer than he responds to me. What forwarder are you using? I'd love to reach out to, for them for a quote. Um, and then he talks about it's a very big one. And he says, thanks. I'll reach out to them and see what we get. Again, very nice. Not jokey. Not a haha, 10,000, 12,000. Yeah, right. Now it's, oh, okay. Now I believe you. But note this is two days ago. So two days ago, he's talking to the owner of Monolith publicly saying it's 12,000. I have that right there. He actually posts it low, lower down below the actual quotes and stuff. And he's talking very positively this. So he now knows that the information I'm sharing is not inaccurate. He, at this point, two days ago, he knows that because somebody has now finally publicly announced the, their prices as much lower than the 21,000, 33,000, the silly numbers we're getting there uh, that, again, sound big. It's that flashy numbers that, uh, again, was put in bold for a reason. Okay, so he knows this now. Now, the reason, and he, he kind of keeps going, he talks to other people, and it's, it's great, it's wonderful, and I'm glad they're talking. It's very obvious to me, by the way, as an aside, that there's a wide range of people paying a wide range of prices. Some of the documents I've gotten have literally said, like, this is for your eyes only, you are under contract, don't share this, which is part of the reason why I don't share them because I shouldn't have them. They're very secretive about this, and they're obviously giving different companies different values. Okay, so just because I say that some companies are doing it cheaper and you're doing it more expensive doesn't mean that I'm inherently a liar, though that is the initial reaction to do apparently. So anyway, he knows about this. Now, why is that important? This is the message that uh, James did after banning me from his group. He says, if you don't let hate and misinformation have a seat at the table, they will say you are censoring them and that you are the real villain. We won't let bad actors manipulate us slash... Hashtag aggressively kind. So he said this four hours ago, yet two hours ago, he found out that I'm not spreading misinformation, that I actually am saying real values. I wasn't lying when I said that I've seen things just like that. Fred's number aligns perfectly with what I have seen. Now th that's on the low end, actually. I've seen higher, but I didn't see anybody until after my video give me anything above 15. Everybody was saying at least 15 or lower. So that's why I went with that because I was seeing a range between pretty much 10 and 15 and I did 10 for the nice round number, but I also gave a much higher one at 20. So it's, it's all fair. I tried to give both extremes there, though they'll only mention the 10, of course. So uh, he knows because he's talked to another professional that, that the, the numbers are there. Okay. And of course, hate. Now, if you can find any hate in my video, please feel free to, but I pinned a message saying to show respect. I started with a disclaimer saying that there's no hate in here and I'm not uh, upset at anybody. And of course, um, I, I said so in the comments and at the end of the video too. Uh, so I said, people aren't getting rich in here. It's expensive. Companies are suffering. They really are. It's tough for a lot of reasons. Not, not so much containers which is what, again, other professionals are saying as well. So anyway, so he's talking about that. And then he kind of doubles down on it, even though, again, two days earlier, he, he said that. And he says, um, you mentioned opinions and beliefs, but those things can be debated. What cannot be debated are facts. He now knows as a fact that Monolith is shipping it for $12,000, but he's acting like he doesn't. Misinformation is harmful. I agree. So he should not be spreading it. He knows I didn't make up what I said. He knows that now. Good faith discussions are healthy, but when one side refuses to engage in the discussion in good faith, it's a fruitless venture. Let's see his engagement in uh, good faith. Let's see what side that is and see who was trying to reach out and who wasn't. Because guess what? These comments, I take pictures of all this. I show all of this stuff. He wants proof. Here is the proof of how people are acting, what people are actually saying. So let's go ahead and take a look. This is my comment chain with Brian Neff. You can go on and read. I'm not going to read it all. It's a lot here. I'll even expand it so you can read whatever you want in this. But you'll see here, these are James's interactions with me right here. Wow, this is all just completely inaccurate, but you just keep doubling down. And then I say, you're up, if you're up for a chat, I'm willing. He was not up for a chat. He never offered. Yeah, I've spoken with some of your peers on this. I'm not out against anyone. Again, if you hear, if you see any of the hate, please let me know. As I said just now, note I will post a follow-up video with some clarification and responses to questions and rebuttals. 
We should have conversations, not arguments and meanness. And as my pinned comment right here says, not all companies are bad. There are plenty of good and honest people making incredible board games. They really are. There's some incredible board games. Check out my single cushion video to see something really cool there. Nothing here is an attack. I'm simply trying to help inform you and, and have you think about, about it, even if you disagree. Have the moral high ground, be respectful. It's okay for people to enjoy Game Y or like Company X, even if you don't. Now, wrote, note that, again, this um, thread has been live for three days where people have been calling me names and cursing me out and calling me an idiot and calling me stupid and all this other kind of stuff and saying how much they hate me and they can't stand to be and all this. That's been going on on his group that he runs, that he allows, that he's sponsoring and approving and fostering that sort of community while I'm saying stuff like this. And I'm aware of it. It was pinned to me right away, but I chose not to engage in it. You'll see that later, too. And and of course, say as much and, and, and of course, say as much in the video as well. I spoke with some devs, saw their numbers, did some research and came to this conclusion. I'm not above clarifying any mistakes or issues after that effort. People are quick to negativity, quick to assumption and quick to dismissals, which is unfortunate. Now, he did say one more thing to me before this. He said, when you call companies, companies, not people, liars, cheaters and scammers, then, then you say you are not here to attack and here to simply inform. Again, I don't think you can attack an entity. Um, uh, come on has no feelings. Come on is not a person. Again, I talk about humanizing. I'm talking to James here. I'm not talking to his company. Um, it's just like he's not talking to my LLC that I don't have or something like that. He's talking to me, okay? That we're talking to people here, okay? Not, not companies. But Either way, apparently that's that he's viewing that as an attack. Um, to inform these things don't add up. Again, he has still not reached out to me. He has still not done that honest, good effort that he's claiming. And I do one more response here. And I say, if a company can't handle a critic being critical, then that's really unfortunate. I get that most companies in the board game space are used are used to using reviewers as third-party advertisers, but to act like a critic can't criticize is a bit silly no matter the normal landscape of the industry. I watched Tom Vassell review a game by running it over with a car. He actually did that, for instance. He hated it, called it trash, called it garbage, ran it over on a car for good measure to show you how much he did not like that product because he thought it was trash. Critics can be critical and com and companies need to be okay with that. In other words, that company shouldn't then go start cursing out and make up a hate mob against Tom Vassell because he didn't like their board game. Because he's not attacking the person saying they're a bad father or that they're mean or anything. He's, he's saying, I don't like this game that was for sale, okay? Or I don't like what this publicly traded company is doing. There's no difference there. But Again, we, we should kind of be consistent there. Companies can choose to react to that with some uh, with data or with petty and childish remarks as their sponsor, uh, as a sponsor and support hatred among their followers. As this Again, I'm saying this because I know exactly what he's doing on his board game group. I've purposely not read any of the comments, so people have just notified me that of what's going on. So again, I'm trying to appeal to like, hey, like you're sponsoring some real big hatred here um, and you're not reaching out or giving me anything here except just kind of one-liners. I'll happily, uh, let's see. Where I'm at here. It's quite telling that my video has several disclaimers, verbal and written, to stress kindness and respect towards others, while some gaming groups decide to actively support the opposite. That type of hypocrisy is not lost on many here, and I'm sure many of you here also can clearly see that hypocrisy. It's a sad day, really, when the industry so openly supports and condones negative behavior towards critics. As for scammers and such, I stand 100% by my statement. I am aware of actual government inquiries and investigations into several board game companies over this. The VAT scam is 100% real, and I imagine that there will be more public trail in due time. I'll happily tag you with the inevitable news article once they come out, if you like. I'll surely cover it in a video, though I doubt he'll be watching my video, and I doubt I'll be able to contact him. I'm sure I'm probably blocked already by now. Uh, while I know it's easier to simply dismiss what I have to say, it does not, in fact, actually form a rebuttal that proves me wrong. And again, if you see any hate in this, please let me know. However, I get it. Making videos like this makes me few friends with game devs. Luckily, my goal isn't to make friends here, but to shine a light on an issue many consumers might have felt, including myself, and that I have some data saying that they are wrong. I look forward to the follow-up video with more data and clarifications, and thankfully some companies actually reached out with offers to talk, and I'll have taken it up with them. I can only wish more companies could act that way. The companies like the one that he runs, um, but he's not interested in that. So when he's over here saying stuff like, 
but then one side refuses to engage in the discussion in good faith. Which side is refusing to engage in discussion in good faith? You viewers can decide, but I'm showing you the information so that you guys can make their own decision. I won't even tell you which one it is, but I believe there is a correct answer to that, and I believe I'm proving that quite well. It's a fruitless venture indeed. So then this person says, literally anything can be labeled as misinformation nowadays. And then he says, if 20 experts within the field of that convention is taking place, give you data, experience, and feedback with a subject and another person with no experience data that they won't share the source on and makes a lot of assumptions and creates outrage, would you label that as misinformation? I would label misinformation as writing a comment like that, knowing that two days ago you spoke with the owner of a much bigger board game developer than you, doing better than you and when it comes to like putting out these games and doing all this, right? Not mentioning that is misinformation. Purposely pretending like that expert that spoke up and said, oh, hey, actually guys, I got it there. And all the other 20 experts were like, oh, really? Give me your information. That's misinformation. That's manipulation. That's lying. It's dishonest, James. That is dishonest. Now I know it's easy to get caught up in this. I know when you get online, it, it, it can consume you and you get stuck into it and you're really close to the issue and it, it, it might make you feel uneasy or something like that. But that's clear manipulation. You know better. You're purposely misconstruing the information and I'm showing the information. I just showed you learning that there's another game developer that's saying, hey, it's cheaper. I'm showing you responding to them. So I know you read it saying, that's amazing. Let me know more information. I'm showing other of these experts that you're choosing to quote, say, wow, that's really cool. Can you hook me up? And him saying, yeah, give me a PM. That's all publicly available there unless you delete what I'm showing, which is why I'm showing it on my video. So you can't delete it. But there is a link down below if anybody wants to go look for themselves. Of course, that's manipulation. That's dishonesty. That's misinformation. Okay, but his data is incorrect. Again, he's seen that my data is correct, but he is doubling down in his words on this misinformation um, mud that he's flinging my way, acting like I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm an idiot and I'm just making up stuff and I don't know what it is and uh, it's all just silly nonsense and jokey jokey. It's not. I'm a real person. This YouTube thing I've been doing for four years, I take seriously. And so when I show something, it's because I've seen the data that shows it. And now you've seen the data that shows it, but only one of us is being honest about that data. And it's not you. Okay, moving on from that. Okay, so let's talk more about that manipulation because he made several comments to me, right? I mean, I guess he should ban himself at this point. Um, that uh, bad actors are manipulating people manipulating people. So that means purposely construing things in a certain way to give a narrative, right? To, to kind of manipulate people into thinking one way or another. Let's take a look at how James manipulates. So we're going to go back to the comment here. Not this one, that's him. Okay. And I'm going to type Wokehaven. That's everybody's favorite word, Wokehaven. Here's that proof, by the way. Here it is right there, 12,500 USD for a 40 foot dry container. Just as an FYI, I think the X is right there. It's dark mode, it's kind of funny sometimes. So again, it's been posted, it's public, you can look at it. Okay, right here, this is great. So Brian Allen says, before industry folks begin trying to engage with this creator in good faith, please be aware of his past history. This is an attempt to cancel, by the way. He likes to generate rage clicks by criticizing efforts to expand diversity and inclusion in the board game space. And by the way, I don't like this. My hands are sweaty. I hate this. This is not comfortable for me. This is not the video I like to do. Go reference me and my single cushion video and see which one I enjoyed doing better. I hate this. This sucks. I would much rather have done the news video I planned for you guys today than this video here. Anyway, by criticizing efforts to expand diversity and inclusion in the board game space, the whole Woke Haven video, he also had a pretty gross reaction to the Thinker Themer video on Viticulture. Check out the 26 mark in this video with the link. Please consider, or please reconsider offering him more legitimacy than he already gets by being sent preview copies of Chaos Games. So he's saying, please stop supporting me, right? I'm not inclusive. I'm, I, I want rage. Okay, even though I've shown you in my video that I purposely point out that there is no rage or no hatred or, or no hate at all in my content, yet he's posting in this clearly hateful forum with tons of bad things. Now you might see, see, this seems a little weird because then it says, he's like responding to himself. So you literally marginalize the woman's pain, right? And again, you can read that here. The reason it looks like he's responding to himself because my comment was deleted. Luckily, so they don't want you to see what I posted. They said that is not allowed. 
let me show you what it is I posted. Because again, I'm so used to being uh, manipulated like this for the people that can control in their little space that I have started taking pictures of most of my comments. Luckily, I did this one as well. So I'm about to show you what you won't see here, but it's clearly uh, uh, there. So let's go ahead and take a look here. This is my actual response. There it is. You can see it's so blue from my notification where I clicked response. And here is my post. I've publicly apologized for using the term woke incorrectly. I was not aware of the baggage and extremist views that bring that brings and changed the thumbnail title as soon as I found out. Quick note, by the way, I was at work. I, my phone was blowing up. I was not expecting this at all. Like I really wasn't. And people were like freaking out. They were like super angry at me and they, they weren't even listening to what I was saying in the video. They were just angry at the title. And I was like, what's going on? And so I search it. I'm literally on my phone in the break room at work searching that. I come home as soon as I can, right at lunchtime, a little bit earlier, it was like 11.50 or so. I literally come home, quickly change the thumbnail so that is not in there and do that. I did all of that effort because that wasn't my intention. That was an honest mistake and I do sincerely apologize for anybody that got upset by that. And I know that some people will be like, oh, don't cater to whatever. I'm not catering to anybody. I'm being honest to myself. I want people to actually watch my video. And I don't want people just to be angry at me. I don't want people to yell at me. I don't want to be cursed out. I don't want to be called a D-I-C-K by random people on the internet. I don't want any of that. I want to be able to talk about things in a mature way. But obviously, and if you watch that video, you'll see that anything like Woke Haven, when it comes to like a negative extremist, anti-whatever view crap that people like to bandwagon on words, apparently, that I'm not always completely aware of. Like, I'd, I'd heard Obama talk about Woke, so I thought it was like, okay to talk like I thought it just referred to the subject matter not an extremist view on it so again I do apologize for that and I fixed it as soon as I possibly could but again they deleted this this is this is something that they viewed as not allowable remember that person calling me a D-I-C-K is totally allowable it's been under that admin comment I pointed it out to them it's been there for hours now it's allowed this comment is not. Was my reaction gross for Thinker Themer? I tried to give, and again, let me know what's not allowed here. Let me know what's bad here. I tried to give sound advice. As someone who's gotten emotional in my feedback, I found it not only hurt, hurtful for my message, but also makes me more vulnerable to the cruel internet people since I'm emotionally open. This was after my poor uh, attempt at a video on um, about like a highway robbery, if you recall that one, where I talked about my poor customer experience event. I got emotional. It hurt my message. It hurt my focus on things and it made me more vulnerable as people commented and said that that was bad. So I've learned this a couple times now. I'm always trying to be better and trying to kind of be when I try to criticize something and you might see this here. I'm trying not to be agitated. I'm trying not to get emotional so that my criticism comes across better and I'm more well prepared for that. When you emotionally um, open up yourself online like that while creating an opinion statement, you're opening yourself up to a, a world of, of harm that I hope she doesn't get. I hope she didn't get that. That's all I'm saying there. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'd tell any new creator that lesson I learned and the hard way, so hopefully they don't have to. I hope she was okay, and I hope that in the future she can better protect her emotional health because it's very important to do that because, as you can see, people on there can be very cruel. I can tell... I can't tell if this is a poor attempt to try at uh, trying to get me canceled or some such, but it is not needed. I can do that myself by posting videos like the one linked above already. The board game industry is not used to being criticized, only the products they make. So not all, so not all companies are prepared to respond well to it. In time, as the industry grows and more people most likely better, better at it than I am, I certainly hope so, begin to cr critique the industry itself, things will certainly smooth over. That's the hope anyway. But this sort of reaction to silence voices that you disagree with is unfortunate, unwelcoming, and immature. And as long as the industry professionals continue to host and support such ideas, they'll continue to have consumers voice their concern over the unprofessional attitude and use of power they have and continue to have. People like me supported by those same consumers that are constantly silenced and rejected. You form an us collective that inherently pushes against and attacks the them instead of reaching out and trying to resolve the concern. Reaching out like how James Hudson did not do. Reaching out like he's claiming I'm not doing. This is the problem here. Now that was removed. It was removed. That is not allowed. You will not see that here because they deleted that comment. They didn't want you to see that response. You can ask yourself, why would James, who banned me, James, who's a creator that runs a board game development company, would remove that comment and ban me for it? 
You, 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 you tell me where the hate is there. You tell me why he would want you to see the claim and the response, but not my response. Use your head and think it through. I know I certainly did. Okay, so obviously a lot of manipulation there. So when he makes a comment saying that there are bad actors manipulating, James is the bad actor. He's lying to you. He's manipulating you. He's hiding information from you. He's actively trying to sabotage me, to hide what it is I'm saying, to remove my voice so that all you hear is his. And then he tries to claim that I'm the bad actor, that I'm the misinformed one, that I'm the one that's manipulating but he can't silence this video. He forgot that, I guess, when he did that. Because he does, because they, they do this to, I mean, when I did the Board Game Geek Sucks video and I talked about the same thing where people were talking bad to me and cursing me out and saying all these mean things, and I try to show kindness and I get banned for it. It's the same thing. It's ironic this has happened twice now. When people are talking trash about me, and the moment I try to say, hey, let's be nice, I get removed from the conversation. But how many of you responded saying, you are saying what I what happened to me? But you guys didn't have a voice, but I do. I have this channel and I have you watching right now because you care because there is a group of people that care enough about this industry to speak up about things like this, to speak up about the abuse, the power abuse, the manipulation and the lies that people like James and Derek have. Now, let's go to the hateful two-faced section of this. I've already proved that they're lying, they're manipulating, they're hiding information, they're skewing, they're mudfling, and they're doing everything they can to sabotage my image publicly as much as they can. And they're removing me from the conversation when I don't be quiet. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we're gonna go um, we're gonna go to Derek and then to James. I have two examples here. So here is my conversation um, with Derek Funkhauser. Again, you can read all of this. By all means, go ahead and do it. I'm in Idaho. It's a one party system. I can share any information that I am a part of a conversation as long as one party like me approves it. So I'm free to do this. Thankfully, I know some laws. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I I reach out because I'm like, okay, obviously. I'm commenting now on Derek saying, and he's saying these like antagonistic things. What is he saying that's antagonistic? I'll show you the exact thing that that kind of he was doing here. So let's let's jump to that real quick and kind of take a look at that. Let's search for that lovely D I C K word. Okay, so he posts here. You are going to comment on the e if you're going to comment on the easy low hanging fruit replies that you should take a shot at replying to the decades of industry experience that you're neglecting to engage with. I've written comments and you'll see this when I show the whole thing that are multiple paragraphs long. But again, I was at work. It was <laughs> this was eight hours ago. It was not even five o'clock yet. So I was like just taking a break real quick to kind of do this because I was in a good mood. I purposely avoided this actually for days to, because. I wasn't emotionally prepared, just like I, just like that advice to think or theme. I was in a, a state where if I saw a whole bunch of people calling me names, cursing me out, being rude, saying how much they suck and how much they hate me, it would not have been good for my mental health. So I just stayed away from it until I was calmer so I could respond better. It's something I think a lot of these companies should have done before supporting this threat, actually. That was kind of a knee-jerk reaction there. Okay, so anyway, I message him. and I'm like, okay, what the heck? So I message him and I say... Hello, Derek. I just wanted to apologize if I made things worse by commenting. Obviously, people notified me of it at the moment it was posted, but I purposely avoided it for a few days as I try to be in a good mood when I can read a lot of negativity about myself before trying to respond, clarify, etc. Would you prefer me just to leave it be? I do plan on making a follow-up video. I don't want to uh, kick an anthill or cause any are you issues on your group? Closing the browser tab is 100% something I can do, and I imagine the thing will just die down as more fun as more fun and most likely interesting posts get into the feed of the group. Again, if you see any hate from me, feel free to point it out. I am indeed sorry if I made things worse. I seem to have upset at least one person there, which is not my intention. I'm not out to fight. No worries. You, we can speak casually because he just started typing and then like backspace. And I was like, dude, just it's fine. Like I'm not angry at you, Derek. Like it's okay. Let's just let's just talk. Like I, <laughs> I get it. You're a dude. I'm a dude. Let's just let's just chat like dudes. Let's you know. Anyway, so and I say a little bit valid feedback and devs and I try to explain myself again. You can you can read all this. I try to even scroll a bit slower for you if you want. Um, that's fine. Here I'm talking about Matthew, uh, because if you recall, boo -boo -boo -boo, 
He says, you should be nice. He's saying this to him. He tagged him. Derek is, uh, is aware of this. Chapter one of advice from a D-I-C-K referring to me because I told him that he should be nice. And that's his response is to kind of joke about it with an admin running the group. And this is where I say that leadership reflects in the community. When you see so much hate spewed out for a person like this, and you see the admins actively participating in that hateful, in that antagonistic, in that disrespectful speech, you reap what you sow, and they are sowing all of this hatred and all of this antagonistic behavior and misinformation and manipulation and, and just vileness towards me, and then try to spin it off as if I'm the vile one, as if I'm some bad guy. But I would challenge you to find where that is. By all means, look for it. But you won't find it, even in my deleted comments, which are just more kindness that they felt didn't deserve your eyes. Uh, it's it's just really unfortunate. So I'm pointing out, hey, dude, this guy is obviously upset and even cursed me out, right? But again, no action taken on him. Perfectly allowed. This has been tagged, pointed out, and the admins say this is okay to do. This is allowed. Board Game Spotlight supports this. Derek Funkhauser says this is a great thing to do. You are fine to do it on his Facebook group. Um, James Hudson says this is a wonderful thing to do, and you can do it on the Facebook group. It's perfectly allowed. So again, if you want to call anybody C D D I C K, Board Game Spotlight is there for you. Uh, you are free to do that. Uh, their actions speak louder than any words they might post, and their actions show that they clearly allow this because they are aware of it. I pointed it out, and they still allowed it. So anyway, I pointed out, okay, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end here, I say, of course. Oh, oh yeah. so he says here, it, um, if you'd stuck with come on angle, probably fine. I'd encourage you to do more information before making a video like that in the future. Um, again, I spoke to several different developers. They were all saying the same thing. They were all under 15,000. So I felt pretty good. I didn't realize that there were people still spending a whole bunch more. You guys need to talk more about amongst yourselves, apparently. But that doesn't make me the bad guy. In fact, you're welcome for pointing that out. You guys were super excited when Fred told you the information. You're welcome for starting the information. Try not to like curse me out next time, maybe, okay? But then he says, I do appreciate you reaching out. He's being very nice to me in person here, right? I say, of course, I'll leave my the comments uh, be, be unless you truly want me to comment and respond to some of them. Because again, he said like, why don't you try to respond to the other ones? So I was like, well, if you want me to, I will. I will have to take the time. I, I know you don't care for how I do things or think often, and that's fine. People can disagree. You can disagree with me. I can disagree with you. That's okay. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean Derek's a bad person. But I appreciate the civil conversation. Know that I'm trying to just do what I feel is right. A lot of people take the humanity out of what I do just as much as the devs do when they make the games we all enjoy at the end of the day. Feel free to reach out anytime about anything. And he says, I'll leave that up to you. I just wanted you to engage with some of the people who brought up real comments as all. So he, the admin, wants me to engage. Take care, man. I will get to those later today. So he, okay, he wants me to engage. Fine. Oh yeah, I'll get to those. So we'll, we'll respond. We'll start the conversation again, again. The bad actor that's not reaching out and not trying to be supportive is James, not me. I uh, got emails to follow up on from some devs and such. Got to finish wrapping up work first. So again, this is this is not, I'm still at work here. And so in fact, this was, I believe I'm going to hover over it. Uh, 5.14 PM here. And then by 5.19, hello, Derek, did you keep me from the group? So suddenly I was going to respond to like one more and then suddenly I just couldn't. I was like, what the heck? And so I couldn't find it. I couldn't see the page or anything. Did you keep me from the group? It's your group and you can run it as you wish. Just wanted to verify. And now notice, notice that I, I do appreciate you reaching out. I'll leave that up to you. I just wanted to engage with you. And now suddenly it's our team. Our team has chosen to remove you and your content from our group. I'm assuming it was not actually uh, Derek here because while he was being uh, cruel and while he didn't, you know, delete the DICK move and, you know, he, he continues to say stuff to Elmo, keeps saying the victim bad, my dude, and all that. Uh, like, he doesn't like me. I get that. I get that. And he's being antagonistic and supporting a hateful... Uh, environment for people to do, uh, then that's fine too. But uh, uh, either way, that I don't think he was actually the one that pushed for that because he had just pushed for something else. I was thinking it was James. But either way, so well, that rather sucks a bit. I think I was one of the most respectful people in that conversation. But again, you can run whatever type of group you want. You can run whatever type of group you want, Derek. Is that the group you want? And if it's one that bans people after trying to ask for more kindness while being cursed out, then that's your decision. I wish you had made a different choice, though. I won't lie. And he said nothing to that. So that sucks. <laughs>
All right, so let's go into the top. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys um, the rest of the video and I'm gonna talk why, or the rest of the comments, I'll talk to you why, why I do this. Oh, no, there was there was one more, there was one more. Let's do Neff, um, or, or how about this, special for something I said. I think that's perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about humanity again. Okay, so this is the last point I had. I forgot to go back to James after Derek. So this is Josh Wiegless, right? And he says, just to set the record straight, it cost us chip theory $27 to ship a copy of Cloudspire, the same for Burn Cycle. That's without any add-ons ex expansions, just a base game that does not include Ocean Freight at all. Uh, we massively subsidized it because we have to compete with Amazons and the like. Edit update. I reached out and offered to have a conversation with him. If, it, uh, if it's broadcast live, he originally asked for an unaired and email interview. I said I was only comfortable if it was streamed live so that I don't become an anonymous source. He could have just requested that. Um, uh, and I can be t and I can be taken out of context. He could call me out if I took him out of context. We'll see what happens. I don't want to roast the guy, but I'm very uncomfortable with CTG being used as a measuring stick for the industry. We're the outlier, not the norm. I'm pretty much every quantifiable way. Ha ha ha. Edit, update, update. He has declined the live stream opportunity. Um, so then, of course, um, James Hudson response here right so josh says i wrote a long response and lord help me offer to have a good faith conversation with them again they're acting very white knightish like like they're you know, doing the olive branch when they obviously don't even trust me apparently um uh in the comments on the video from the official cdg account hopefully it gets some likes and raises to the top so people can see how inaccurate he is we'll see i tried again i was not inaccurate i gave accurate numbers for some people if it's more expensive for josh that's on him that's not my fault and that's proven. It's been proven now. I mean, people have come out and actually publicly said it now, which is wonderful. And then he says, if he wants to be an investigative reporter, I don't. Um, he has to cite his sources. Not true. There's plenty of reasons why you wouldn't. Um, even court documents are, are sealed at times. Uh, d I'm not going to have somebody that that like reached out to me and said, hey, by the way, like what Kaman's charging isn't matching my stuff to then just like start mudflinging because then I don't want to name names. I don't want to say, oh, this company did this and this company did that and this company did that. That's why I chose Kaman because I'd already made claims against them. And so it was nothing new because I didn't want it to take away from the message. And that's why I only did one. So I gave two positives and only one negative. And I debated on even doing that, but I decided to do that. And they're like, no, I want you to name all the names and stuff like that. No, that's, that's, I don't want to do that. So anyway, he says update to the update. He has declined to do a live stream with me. And then James, again, in his, um, olive branchness on his kindness and stuff says, I am shocked sarcastically. So I responded and said, you're rude, not shocked, James. My special needs son is home from the summer for the summer and I work during the days and he's very loud and needs my attention often. It's why I record past 1 a.m. usually when he's finally asleep. Now, that if you recall, especially in my old um, videos, he used to be right above my office and you would hear the banging sometimes. That was him jumping up and down. Uh, so if you didn't know, and not that it's really anybody's business, but he is 16. Uh, he's developmentally about a year, year and a half year old. He's not potty trained. He's nonverbal. Um, he, he, he doesn't know how to really do anything. Um, he very hands-on, uh, very needy, very loud. Um, you can think of like a baby when a baby's hungry. What do they do? Well, they cry. And if you don't get them the food right away, they throw a fit. Well, he does that too, but he's a 16-year-old boy, so he's this huge kid. Okay, this is the kind of stuff that people in their real lives and human lives deal with that you just forget about. That you just assume, oh, anybody can live stream, right? I don't have this setup, James, and I don't have the kids that you have. I can't live stream. Nonetheless, it would be a dedicated video for one person that would take up an entire slot when I can barely keep up with that, my output now. So it's not efficient. It's, that's why I want an email so it can last multiple days so I can just do it as I can because I can't dedicate that much time to just one thing and then air it and then all that. All because you guys accuse me of lying because it doesn't match your numbers. All be okay, so anyway, uh, why 1 a.m. usually when he's finally asleep. I have live streamed twice in four years of doing this. It's very difficult for me to do. Additionally, it's it, it'd be a dedicated and long video for just data from a single person, hardly super effective. And again, he banned me after this. He saw this and still decided to ban me. He doesn't care about my special needs, and he doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about people. He cares about his public image, which is why he's trying to ruin mine. 
All because apparently after four years of talking about the industry, I decide to misrepresent CTG after talking to him like he somehow couldn't call me a liar within minutes of me posting that video. That's not just silly, it's insulting. So by all means, enjoy hosting these types of conversations around people while wearing your United Against Hate shirt. Whatever makes you feel better, James, while you host dedicated conversations like the one here, certainly full of love and respect and a welcoming attitude. He banned me, by the way. That's how he reacted to this. He didn't say sorry. He didn't man up. He didn't act mature about it. He banned me. I'd quote you and say I am shocked in a sarcastic tone by the dual-natured attitude seen here, but I'll leave that line to you. You say it very well. You're very good at being sarca sarcastic. You're very good at being rude. And you're very good at being manipulative. So I will leave that to you and I'll just choose not to do that way. So uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of rough. And if you want to see the conversation there, here's the whole conversation there. You can see his and you can see mine. Okay, so there's his and there's mine. As you can say, I have mixed feelings with this. It sucks. I wanted to have data. I want to talk to these people, but I can't I can't live stream. And if that's your your little prop on the live stream or bust, and then you wanna ha, <laughs> he didn't say he didn't say yes to the live stream. I'm shocked. Well, that's just kind of a jerk move. Okay, I got stuff that I'm dealing with. And again, Josh is super nice to me personally, just like Derek was super nice to me personally, but then they go on the Facebook and they ha 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 on me and all that kind of stuff. So it's just unfortunate to see the two-facedness. It's unfortunate to see the pettiness, especially from actual developers of board games. These are not just people. These are the industry, the people in the industry. Um, and it, it's not just that. Hungry Gamer, Hungry Gamer's in this conversation. He decides to to lay in on, on me and all that kind of stuff. I mean, the, all of this is, again, public. They just publicly like to, to be rude. Okay, so I don't know if I skipped or not. So I'm going to, again, go from the top. And we'll just scroll through it so you can see it. So it's captured forever and they can't delete it. This is what everybody said. Okay. And again, it's just super unfortunate. Maybe I can just scroll smoothly. I think I'll do that. There you go. You guys can see it that way. You guys can pause it at any time if you want to see anything that was said. I believe I've expanded pretty much everything I could. Again, you'll see Hungry Gamers comment. Oh, there it is right there. So that is the type of video, especially the negative ones. It gets so many views. They generate numbers. I guarantee if I did a video where I talked about a game, so Rush of Marshmallows over at Burning Wreckage, I could get 20,000 views. Again, that's just dismissal and kind of rude, Hungry Gamer. Like I said, Tom Vassell ran over a board game with a car. So why don't you talk to him about negative things or whatever. He made a whole video about how negative criticism is good. So maybe you have an issue with Tom Vassell too. Or maybe you should just be kinder and not participate in conversations like this where people are cursing out other your peers and your other content creators. Um, I learned long ago that uh, you should let people make content for their viewers and not hate on them. Maybe it's time you should too. Anyway, you can see all of this. It's just unfortunate that this happened. It's unfortunate that they tried to silence me, that they tried to remove me from the conversation. They tried to hide com responses I made. They tried to ignore information that they knew about and lie about it and pretend it didn't exist. That they support people cursing out each other, calling people names, being mean, being hateful, and try to peg them on me like I'm the hateful one. Like it's my fault. Like I'm the one that's trying to manipulate people and be mean when I've shown nothing but restraint, immaturity, and kindness, at least to the best of my ability. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect, but it's really unfortunate to see it come to this. I did not want to make this video. I had a news video planned. You saw a tease of that actually in my Cinco Cushion video. Oh, here's, here's, here's me doing the low-hanging fruit, apparently, according to Derek. Apparently that's low-hanging fruit. Me, you know, doing all this commenting and stuff like that. There you go. That's everything. Now they can delete it all they want. They can try to hide it. The truth is out there. There's a quote from Leo Tolstoy. If you don't know who he is, he was this uh, very rich um, author in Russia. He had one of the first printed books. He had lots and lots of money. And in his older age, he decided that all this wealth that he had didn't really matter. And he wanted to be a philosopher and kind of live without a lot of means and stuff like that. And his wife was not very happy about that because she liked the money. But um, suffice it to say, he has this quote, and I actually have this framed at my cube. I'm going to put a picture of it up here. I'll let you guys see it. I think I'm going to end on this. Everybody thinks of changing the world, but nobody thinks of changing themselves. Food for thought. I'm not going to comment on that any longer. You guys can feel free to dig into that as you wish. 
As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video does not put too much of a downer on your week. I hope you have a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend. We're going into July 4th here soon in the USA. It's a very exciting time, and there are plenty of great and wonderful board games for us to enjoy and hype over. Oh, Sworn is delivering soon. I just did Sengo Kushin. There's more game announcements coming. It's a wonderful, bright world out there. Go get some sunshine. Hug people. Be kind. Be loving. Be better than the admins the, the admins of this group take care guys bye